I am focusing on this stencil by Miriam Wolf to create enough gel press prints to create a collage this week. This is the continuation of the prompt stencils and I have chosen to support the people that are supporting me in my channel or on my channel and in my Facebook group, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Miriam Wolf has designed this stencil called Happy Stream, which you can purchase over at PM Artist Studio. They make great stencils out of 74 pound UPO paper and they will offer you a 10% discount for any purchase over $35 if you use the code PEGFAN10. So once again, my name is Peg and I call this channel Two Oak Crows Mixed Media. Let's get started. I love this stencil by Miriam Wolf. You can also find her at Art Curious by MNW. That is her Facebook channel. And I am going to use this stencil, some baby powder, and we are going to create enough gel press prints to make a collage. So one stencil and we're going to collage with that. I am choosing my colors and I think that I would like to start with this red iron oxide and I'll put that out on a coat on my gel press print. Now what I want to do is keep these coats of paint very thin because I want to layer and I'm really not that patient with the drying time, so I don't want a real thick layer of paint. So I'm going to lay the stencil down and put another sheet of paper over top and pull that paint out of those open areas. Give it just one more touch with my Baron. And I'll set that aside and now I have a nice thin coat of paint here on the press. I'm going to follow up with orange and again I'm trying to keep that coat as thin as I possibly can. I'm just brayering off there on the side and I wind up using some of that brayer off paper as well. Just removing some paint with one downstroke of the brayer. And you can see the imprint of the first layer underneath. And now that I have it covered with that orange, I'm coming back with the yellow ochre. And in that yellow ochre layer, I am just utilizing some caps that I had laid out in different size circles because this happy stream has a lot of circular shapes in it. So I want to continue with the circular shapes and I'm just dotting the entire gel press. And now I'll pull and I'm just using copy paper. and hitting it with my Baron once again. And here is my first print. And I think those colors are working nice together. I don't know what you think, but it's the red iron oxide, just a, a Liquitex orange and a Liquitex yellow ochre. So I'm going to go back, but I'm going to start with the orange. And I lay my stencil down and clean those open areas take a sip of coffee that's important and now I'll come back with that red iron oxide and I don't know what attracted me to these colors this week, but I'm liking them. I normally have a tendency to go dark and grunge and I tend towards the browns and the blacks and the monotone things. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to step out a little bit. I'm going to comb through 
the red iron oxide with just a little plastic comb to give a little bit of definition there. And I'm looking at that and thinking I need a little bit more. Now I'm going to go back sideways. So I've gone one downstroke and one side stroke, which is creating a little hash pattern or a little cross hatch, maybe is what I want to call it. And now I will pull those layers with the yellow ochre. And I am just going to put some definition in the yellow ochre by laying the stencil down and brayering over the top of it. And let's see how that turns out. And it looks like there's quite a bit of paint on there. So let me put the Baron, use the Baron to kind of make some firm connection. And let's pull what we can. And there's our second pull. Doing that one more time, I'm pulling out the open areas of that stencil and going back with the orange color. And we'll pull that And there we have one more print that I think is going to work well. So we'll lay down some orange back with the stencil once again I guess I fibbed I guess we're going to do this two more times and I'm just trying I'm starting with a different color just trying to get some different shades some different variations to use in the collage. So I went orange this time, then yellow ochre, laid the stencil down and gave a little bit of an imprint. We'll go with just the two colors and pull that print. So we're getting, while it's the same print, you can see we're getting different variations, different um, tones, of those three colors together. So I'm going to set those aside and now I want to add some gold and I'm using a golden iridescent fine gold and I want to just coat a couple of sheets of paper with just this gold color and then we'll reveal that gold in a future print here. And I have a bunch of different golds, but to get that background gold, I found that that golden iridescent fine gold worked really well. And you can see it covers, covers the page very nicely. So now I'm going to lay down the red iron oxide. And here is where the baby powder comes in. So I'm going to use the baby powder as a resist. I'm just holding it up high and shaking it and letting it fall wherever it may. Then I'll utilize the gold sheet and pull that red iron oxide. And where that baby powder is to resist the paint, you'll see that gold come through. And I love the way that printed off. I don't know. I think this is going to make a, a good addition to, to the collage. I just wanted to pick up some of that gold on another one of those sheets, that leftover gold. I didn't want to waste it. And now I don't want to waste that red iron oxide either. So I used that 
one of those sheets of gold to pull up that extra red iron oxide. Now I'm just going over the top of the baby powder and the remainder of the red iron oxide and using a brayer off sheet or a sheet that I pulled um, earlier of the red iron oxide to pick up that gold. So we have a couple of different various imprints that we can use in this collage. Let's clean the plate off. Add a little red iron oxide, a little gold. And I'm lying that stencil down. just to create the imprint and we'll pull that print as well. So now that kind of completes the gel press printing for, for the background of the collage, but I want to add some figures, some abstract figures, and I want a black, maybe with a little bit of that red iron oxide, some white mixed in. So I just want to do some mark making, if you will, with the black paint on my gel press. So I'm going to pull three or four sheets of just black, no rhyme, no reason. I want to hit it with that stencil a little bit, pull some of that paint off the gel press and see if we can't come up with something that we can utilize to create some images for our focal point. And I'm probably creating more than I'm going to need, but you can always use some extras, right? So now I have pulled out a canvas and I've decided to put this on a canvas. I have quite a few of these orangey red images with that happy stream stencil that I can utilize. And I think it's really interesting to just create a collage with one stencil and one stencil only. And, you know, the challenge is creating a difference or enough of a variation to make that interesting. Um, most often when we're creating stencils, we're utilizing gel press prints that have been done by a number of different stencils. But this, I'm being very loyal to this happy stream. Now I'm just drawing out my, my little pattern for my people. And I'll cut that out of the copy paper. and use that as a pattern to figure out where on these black sheets I'm going to cut my person from. I hope I'm making sense. All right, so there's, there's one. And I'll just cut him out and then I'll cut a couple of others as well. I want a total of three as my focal point. So I want to make sure that I find three that I can utilize.
now it's start time to start pinning together the collage. So I want to choose the colors or the gel press prints that I think will work well. I want to get that white edge off of them. I don't want to cut them um, straight. I want to kind of tear them so there is that feathered edge on there. And I just am trying to lay these into place and make my decisions on what I'm going to utilize. It's not quite wide enough, but I think I can piece that together if I want to use that there. But I'm not sure that's, that's what I want. So I'm still just trying to figure out, I don't know, what do you think? I kind of like that in that upper left hand corner. I think I've decided that that's definitely going to stick. Maybe add another little sliver underneath that for a little bit of interest. I'm just not happy with that gold on the bottom like that, I didn't think. There's my sheet for a little bit of interest and I think maybe I could tuck some gold in there and that would look nice as well. So that's a thought. Here are my people. I really like this sheet. get just some gold and I'm going to tuck that underneath. I'm a little out of frame. I apologize for that. There we go. Let's pull it back down a little bit. But you can see that gold kind of adds some definition there between the two. And there's one of my people. So they'll See how they look on top. So I think we're getting, getting there. We're starting to make some decisions. Now, do I want this family of five or do I want to stick with three? I decided to grab this uh, Kozo paper. Um, I can't remember what they call it, but I cut that out of a huge sheet of those. And I think I like that gold up top better. Maybe not. Well, I think I have some decisions made. So I'm going to start gluing it down with, um, you can use gel medium. I use just a mixture of PVA glue and water.
I've decided on that. And I still haven't made a decision. That I kind of like that gold. But I think I would like something maybe a little darker there. I don't know. Let's see. I think this is going to be the winner. I think I like that better. It gives that darkness. It's still the red iron oxide, but it doesn't have the orange or the yellow in it. It's just the red iron oxide and the gold. And I like that little bit of contrast there. And then I'll lay this on top. And I think I've got a pretty good combination there. So that's not bad for, for one stencil. So let me trim this down and I'll get everything glued around the edges. And then we'll come back and we'll figure out how we want to address the focal point on this collage. I want that paper stuck down on those edges in case I decide not to paint, that I at least have a representation of what I'm doing on the sides. And I may have to go back and add additional strips of the collage paper if I decide not to paint around the outside edge. But we'll see what happens. So here are my family of of three and I have this stamp that I also purchased from PM Artist Studio and I'm loving this stamp and I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to look that up for you right now because I am crazy about this stamp. I think it's one of Froyle's designs. I'm not sure. Um, it is called Dream Big Script Poem by Froyle and it is also available over at PM Artist Studio. And I just put the um, black and the gold. I did some stamping in black, some stamping in gold. I put that on my gel press and brayered it onto the stamp and and I love the way it looks on my on my little people cut out of paper. So these are those black brayer off sheets and printed sheets that that I used and then I'm going to use this Kozo paper and lay that down as well. I want to go around the outside edge of all these people with some black ink so I don't have any white edged paper showing. It's always a decision, isn't it? It's putting a collage together is just a series of decisions. And you know, I I get so fearful of making the decision and then I have to remind myself this is just paper. <laughs> this is just copy paper. If, if you make a decision and it doesn't look good, you can start over. But sometimes it's hard to do that. But I, I am liking the way this is turning out. I think, I think that Happy Stream stencil made a wonderful collage. 
I'm taking my little fan brush and adding some gold splatters and putting my gold ink down hitting it with some water making it a lot more liquid and then putting it onto the collages splatter and I'm going to do the same thing with some black I have my old painted up hair dryer that I used to dry it and now we'll just do the same thing with some black I'm just going to set it up and look at it for a minute and decide what I want to do. And I've decided that I would like to pull out my charcoal and just go around the outside edge of all of my images to give them a little more definition one from the other. I stack them pretty tightly on top of each other and I want to make sure that that I get every everyone kind of given a little bit of an outline. It was funny because I hung this on the wall in my studio, which is what I do with just about everything that I create. I hang it up so I can look at it and decide if I like it or add to it or go over it. You know, you never know what you're going to do. And my husband came over and looked at this and he couldn't see the people. And I thought, how can his eye not pick that up? Is, is it really just a big blob of paper on there? Or, you know, or my, is there really definition there? He came up with all kinds of other things that he saw in it. And I guess that's good, too. But I was a little shocked that, that he couldn't differentiate my images. And once I pointed it out to him, he saw it, but his eye just didn't pick it up. I thought it was kind of funny. So we are now getting towards the end and I've decided that I want to give a shadow to the overall collage by adding the black around the border. And I think that defines it just a little bit more. And now for the final, I let everything kind of dry and I'm coming back in with a coat of hard coat. And I'm doing this to protect that charcoal that I laid down to make sure that that doesn't, um, you know, get hit with some moisture and smudge and so forth. So I'm being very careful when I put this on not to move the charcoal because it will move with the wetness of this Mod Podge. And this goes on and it looks kind of filmy and you feel like you're ruining the entire process but it dries very clear and it has just a tiny bit of a shine to it. So I'm going to go around the outside edge all over the front. I'm going to let that dry and now I will share with you just a little a photo montage of the finished product and see what you think and I'll see you in just a moment at the end screen. So stick with me and wait for the end screen.
We have finished this week's work with Miriam Wolf's Happy Stream Stencil. I love it. I hope you'll pop over to PM Artist Studio and purchase one for yourself. Thank you so much for being here and joining me for my coffee cup prompts. The playlist you'll find right here for everything that I've done previously since October of last year, I think, is when I started this. I'm not exactly sure, but check it out.